Hello everybody, so it's Dave and it uh, feels like forever since I've done an update. Um, I think we've had Christmas, New Year, couple of weeks off, bit of holidays, bit of food, bit of family, bit of everything. I hope you're all keeping safe because um, there's a lot of virus out there at the moment, isn't there? And uh, I think we're all just trying to, trying to keep safe and keep away from it, which touch wood. If we've got any wood around here, we are, we're kind of doing. So, um, updates on the car. Um, done a fair amount. Um, lots of testing as well because there's a few things that were bugging me. Um, but we'll run through them pretty quick, uh, as I always try and do. So the first thing that went wrong, I guess, was... I think the last thing I did was I got the charger working. Fantastic! It charges the low voltage battery and the high voltage batteries. Got the BMS in there, all working beautifully. But I found that after about 15 minutes, it cut off. So uh, by deduction, I figured that I think it was overheating. And uh, so the power distribution module here, which does the charging, actually has uh, exhaust and input for water cooling. And uh, when it's in the Nissan Leaf, it's all one stack. So the cooling cools the motor, the inverter, and the charger all in one system. But of course, I've separated them. The inverter and motor up front, and the charger is at the back. So I needed to make a cooling system, which I've done. And uh, it's a little bit over-engineered, to be honest, but I thought I'd just share it with you. So what have we got? We have, as I pointed out here, um, an exit for water. So I've got a hose, well, I'm not getting the right bit. I've got a hose here going down. If we come around here, I have a hose input here. Uh, I've got a little T-junction here with a header tank that came from a motorbike. So that's full of water. I don't need to prove that's full of water. And then that pipe runs down through the bottom of the car. Now the RX-8's got quite a nice well. I probably can't see it as a well here, which is quite handy because if these leak, they're going to leak into the well, and um, and they leak quite a lot when I was building it, as you might imagine, a homemade um, uh, cooling system. So when it leaks, it just leaks into that well, which is quite cool. It doesn't then flood the compartment or do anything crazy. It just leaks onto the floor. So that's nice because I feel then if it does leak, it's not going to affect the high voltage or the low voltage system. So if we go under the car, now this is this is quite cool. If we come under here, uh, hopefully we can see on the camera. I've mounted a radiator. This is from a Volkswagen Polo. Found this. Um, it's actually a new one. I didn't buy a second. I was going to buy a second hand one, but it just came with a fan as well. So, uh, radiator and fan. I've mounted it underneath where the exhausts used to be. So, it's right underneath the car. And as you can see, I've got the pipework going into it. Pipework over there. Mounted to that's the original Nissan Leaf pump, water pump. Uh, that's on its original bracket from the Nissan Leaf as well, which I've welded to the chassis of the car, so all that's fixed in place, and the wiring for the motor, and the wiring for the, uh, sorry, the wiring for the motor and the fan is all on the same wiring, and uh, what I did, if I get up, is, um, because I, I got no way of controlling the motor, really, um, I, I could potentially look at the can and see when the thing was getting hot, but I thought that must be a simpler way of doing it, so I found this cool little device, here, which is a temperature sensor bit, uh, board, and you can see I've put the sensor here on top of one of the outlets for the water, and you can set it to a certain temperature. When it gets to that temperature, a relay triggers, and it just sends 12 volts out. So quite simply, when it gets hot, I've set it to 25 degrees, it uh, triggers 12 volts, and the fan and pump come on. So I think I'll do a little demonstration. Let me put the camera down, I'll get this ready, I'll do a demo, and I'll show you how it works. Right, so I've turned the ignition on, and I think on the camera, can you see that 20.3? I think it's just a bit of a wire in the way, but that's 20.3. If I put my thumb on the sensor, it'll start to climb quite quickly. I'm not sure if my thumb will get it to 25 degrees before it gets too cold. 23, well it won't bore that, but I've got my heat gun here. So I'm just gonna whack the heat gun on. And you'll see the temperature will rise pretty quick. When it gets above 25, there we go. So I'm just going to let that go a bit hotter, a bit hotter, a bit hotter. I can hear the fan. I don't know if you can, but if I come under here. There we go. One fan spinning. Uh, you probably can't hear the water pump, but the water pump is pumping. And spinning. So that's really cool. Quite a simple little elegant solution to keeping the rear cool. Now that fan is, that radiator is way too big really for what I need cooling wise. Um, so I've kind of contemplated actually running pipes from the motor to use this to cool. 
But do you know what? I'll just build another cooling circuit at the front. It wasn't the end of the world. Um, the biggest difficulty and my biggest top tip if you do this yourself is um, air. I got air trapped in this system and because it's all a bit uneven, the radiator's a bit of a slant and it, it was an absolute ball ache to bleed the air out of it. Um, kept getting air stuck in the pump, pump wouldn't prime, pump couldn't pump, pump would stop working. Um, the way I did it in the end was actually submerged all the pipes underwater around the pump. So obviously it circulated the air out, connected them underwater and then it was okay. So <laughs> I don't know if that's a, a technique to use but it worked for me. I've got no air in the system and it pumps beautifully, keeps it lovely and cool now when it's charging. Um, only thing I've got to do now is put the put some antifreeze in, which I'll do in the header tank. I um, there is a bleed. I can bleed water out the bottom. Um, I'm not going to do that for fear of getting air back in. So I've actually bought a giant syringe. Where is it? Here it is. Giant syringe. I'm actually just going to syringe water out the top, put the coolant in, run it, and so on until I've got about, I think it takes about two litres the whole system. Uh, I'm going to put a litre of antifreeze in there and that's this side done. Um, so other thing I've been working on is that while I was doing all that I noted that my Arduino, when I turned it off or turned it on was, was reprogramming it, my water pump made a different tone. It would go rrr, rrr. I was like, well, that's, that's not right. Why is it drawing current through my Arduino? Um, and it might explain why my Arduino was getting quite hot as well. Um, I still don't fully understand why, but what I've done is I've now put my Arduino on a separate circuit. It's not on the 12 volt circuit of the car. It's, um, I've got a little five volt uh, converter here because the throttle pedal is five volts. So that takes 12 volts from the car, converts it to five volts, powers the throttle pedal. It now powers my Arduino as well. And that little gremlin has gone away. The other gremlin that I had that was the same thing was my little display in the car that displays, uh, it's, well, it doesn't yet, but it's going to display how much percentage of battery you've got left, would, when you put the throttle down, it will cut out. And I think it was the same gremlin going on, because now I've put this all through the 5 volts, that doesn't happen either. However, another thing that was a bit odd is the display would randomly display odd characters. And um, that's a wiring issue. I think the wire I used was too thin to just get the signal, the distance I need it to. So I'm just in the process of rewiring that and I'll have my little display working again. So yeah, lots. There's all been quite a lot of fault finding and all that. I mean, air bleed of this, my radiator, getting the air out, took me uh, six hours. It was ridiculous how long it took. Um, but I'm glad that's all done. Uh, next thing, once I've got the wiring done, is I'm going to do the cooling circuit up front. I think that's cool. I've already been doing some more longer tests uh, on uh, it lifted up, so I've had the wheels running for about 20 minutes. Just I, I programmed it just to run at 10% throttle for a longer period, just to get some temperatures in, see if there's any faults, and that's where a few of these gremlins have obviously crept up. But just a bit of a bit of static testing, and I'm um, going to start doing some more road testing. But I live on quite a steep drive again, and um, it's wet, and I just don't want to get beached at the bottom of the driveway and I can't get up and that would just be a nightmare. I do have the um, winch, but the winch isn't long enough to go all the way down the drive, so I think a better, better preparation, if I get a big rope that goes all the way down the drive, then I can do some testing knowing that um, I can always winch it back up, but I just don't want to get my car stuck at the bottom of the driveway because that would be a pain in the ass. Um, so anyway, here's under the bonnet again. It's been a while since I've looked, shown, looked at all this. I've been doing a bit more tidying up in the cabling there. Got to do some adjustments on the box so that lid fits properly. Um, inverter's all done. The high voltage cabling needs a bit of tidying. Um, the, the water circuit will come in here and probably go down where the oil radiators were in here. Get a big radiator in there. Um, probably use the same principle. Um, just a temperature sensor stuck on somewhere that just measure the temperature and, uh, and trigger on when it needs to. So yeah, all good. All good progress. Um, I'm going to carry on working on it this evening, um, process this video, get it up there. But again, thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.